Hey, I'm Alex Rackle from Board Game Co. And this video is going to be me going through 40 campaign experiences, or not exclusively campaign, campaign legacy and campaign adjacent experiences, and then trying to decide which of those 40 to get rid of. I have a list in front of me. We're going to be going through all these times as usual, but this has 40 different in alphabetical order. In alphabetical order, we have 40 different experiences to go through, different games, some of them ranging from as little as, I don't know, playing through a... a, a several hours in a row, maybe five, ten hours in a row, and some of them ranging up to hundreds of hours of content, and we're going to be going through them because I have to get rid of some of these games. 40 is too many. We're talking about games like Frost Tape and Teneris, Oathsworn. There's just way too many of these big box experiences, and I cannot keep them all. My goal today, and we'll see what happens, I don't know, I've only, I have like some things that I know in this, in this video, but others I'm going to be trying to push myself as much as I can as I go, but effectively my goal today is to get rid of a minimum of 10 of these games, to decide that a minimum of 10 of these are simply not staying. Many of these I have played, many of these I have not played, many of these, I, all of these I want to play, almost Almost all of these I want to play. I want to say 39 out of the 40 are, are higher for me, and the 40th is kind of just a throw in to make it a nice round number 40. We'll talk about them. But either way, these are all games I want to get to. I just have to make decisions. So a minimum of 10 of these have to leave today, or I'm just going to, you know, cancel this entire video and just not put it up, maybe, or not. We'll see. And ideally, if I can, if I can get to 15 out of these, that would be great. Now, these are all experiences I have. We're not talking about, you know, the uh, Storm Sunders of the world, which haven't even shown up yet. We're talking about games that are here in my basement, with, with one exception, and we'll get to that as well, although I own it. It's just not here. But let's go ahead and dive into this. Timestamps as usual down below. And I'm on my, you know, vlog camera over here because I'm going to be wandering around my basement. Sometimes when I do these videos, putting a, I put a bunch of games on a table. But these are big boxes. I cannot get 40 of these onto the table. So we're going to be wandering. And yes, that is the delightful Chris George in the background. I just started his top 20 games of all time. His first four picks are ridiculous and terrible and the worst. Also, Chris, uh, Trains is fantastic. And you're not the only one who thinks so. I'm being annoying. I love Chris. Chris is great. But either way, past that. And yes, that's a few for Odin playing through that. Uh, that's actually with Board Game Dave, another channel you should check out. Board Game Dave is fantastic. We played a Feast for Odin, which is apparently his favorite game. Uh, we tied our last game 125 points each. There's no tiebreaker in a Feast for Odin. That's insane. It's not only my best score ever, but also a tie, which is pretty cool. But either way, that's neither here nor there. Neither of those are campaign games. We will go ahead and start this video off, and we'll start off. Let's just cross things out as I go, because let's start off with something around in my general area. Let's start with Cloudspire. Okay, Cloudspire, how do I, how do I indicate this? Let's go over here. We have a little sheet. I'm trying to think how I want to indicate things as I go, because Cloudspire is not a question at all, 100% staying here. Cloudspire is not going anywhere. This isn't a conversation. This isn't a question. Cloudspire is not at any risk. Let's think. I could go ahead and underline things i don't know let's put checks and x's and lines for things while uncertain because a line could turn into a check or x i like this i like this so class is going to go ahead and get a check right now because it is staying Nice, firm check. No line, just a firm check on Cloudspire. And Cloudspire is over here. It's currently all over here in this little cubby calyx over here, sitting down there. And it's an excellent game. And it's one that I could see it leaving someday. I could. It's a kind of game experience that I think... I think it could be replaced with other Chip 3 game style experiences, but right now it's just too darn good, and so right now Cloudspire stays and it's safe. Although, let's go immediately to my first cull. Oh, 10 is going to be hard. 10 of these is going to be hard. See, I'm looking at Hoplo. Hoplomachus Victorum. You see, Hoplomachus Victorum is over here, and this one, strictly speaking, deserves a firm line. A firm line. And we're going to see if I need to use Hoplo to get to 10. I will do so. Okay, that's my commitment right now at the beginning of, the, the beginning of this video. Because Hopmox Victorum, I think it's an excellent experience. I think it's genuinely an excellent experience. Hopmox Victorum is great. Also, I think that has a little bit too much grind, and I'm happy with what I've experienced, and I don't feel the need to keep it. Now, Hopmox is remastered? Don't know yet. Still, still the, the, the jury's still out on that one. Hoplo Victorum, in its current state, I would get rid of. Not that it's not good. It is good. This video, this entire video is going to have Chris behind me. This is, let's move over here. This entire video. So, Hoplo Victorum is an excellent experience, but the problem is, I've said this already a few times, the more you play it, the more the grind shows its face. And the problem with that is that with a, an entire cast of so many incredible experiences, keeping something like that just feels like the wrong choice. So, the only reason it's potentially staying right now is because I know that Chip Theory Games is looking into future Hoplo plans and potentially ways to adjust that so you can have all the highs of Hoplo without the grind of the experience. And so I kind of want to keep it to see how that plays out, but in its current state, it's gone. So if we can't get to 10, Hoplo is gone. 
If we can't get to 15, Hopple's going to stick around. From there, though, we're going to go ahead and just cover the game right behind my head over here, which is Crimson Scales. And Crimson Scales should get a check mark that it's staying. Although, even that one has, like, a caveat. That one falls in the category of, will I ever actually play it? Right now, I'm playing through Frost Statement, which let's go ahead and do that too. So Crimson Scales is going to get a nice firm check mark for right now. Nice firm check mark. We got two check marks down, one half check. And we have Frost Statement kind of behind you over there. You can see it right over there. That's a little sitting in that cubby over there. Uh, Frost Statement is one that currently playing through it over on Camp Co-op. Chris George. Currently playing through it over on Camp Co-op. And that one's sticking around as an easy one because we are currently playing through it. Professor Meg and myself are playing through it. And Crimson Scales is on our list of things to get to at some point as well. Hence why Crimson Scales is safe right now. So is Frosthaven. And I'm going to give Gloomhaven, which is uh, down over here, a check as well. And Gloomhaven gets a check because Gloomhaven is, well, essential for Crimson Scales. You need the tiles for it. Although that will bring us to our first X. Because I do have our first X, and it's a little bit cheating, although, uh, if, let's just be fair. Our first X is going to go to Jaws of the Lion. Jaws of the Lion is going to get an X over here, because over here, we got Jaws of the Lion. Let's start, let's start getting up right now. Jaws of the Lion, this, this is my studio basement. You've probably seen it in some videos here and there. Everything is smaller, like behind the camera. Also, the lights aren't set up here, so uh, my face may be uh, alternately decently lighted, depending on where I am at points. But we have Jaws of the Lion over here, on the table. Now, this is one that... Jaws is one that I already put in a Games Leaving the Collection video. Also, to be fair to myself, I, I had this video, I had this list printed up before I did that video. I just forgot about it, and Jaws went into that video. But Jaws doesn't need to stay, because Jaws is the most accessible entry point into the Frosthaven Gloomhaven universe. But I will be playing through Jaws of the Lion digitally over on Camp Co-op, so I will play this game, and if I want more Frosthaven, Gloomhaven, uh, Jaws, all that, I have those series. And I think Jaws of the Lion is not as good as the other games in the series, I think it is the best entry point to the series. But I'm past the entry point needs, so for me, Jaws can safely leave. And speaking of things that can safely leave, and this is the one gimme, I told you that I had to get this list to 40, and so... Yeah, I did. I see. That's the thing. That's good. Trudvang. Trudvang Legends isn't on this list because I already made that decision. Versus Darkest Dungeon. Darkest Dungeon. I don't even know if it's been in a Games Leaving the Collection video. It's down over here right now, kind of just sitting in the corner. But Darkest Dungeon can safely go. And it's not that Darkest Dungeon isn't fun. I play Darkest Dungeon a little bit, not a ton, but it's going to get an X right now because Darkest Dungeon, as much as I thought it had potential and promise to be enjoyable, I don't think it had the kind of potential and promise that has me fighting for it when you have 40 other games here, 39 other games here that I, I do want. So as of right now, we got uh, two little dings as far as our, you know, getting chicken scratches to get to 40 games, to get to 10 games leaving the collection. Which brings us to what else do we have over here? We have Chronicles of Junagar here. It has to stay. Chronicles of Junagar is going to get a check right now. Let's go ahead and show you that one. That's another one that, I don't know if I'm going to get to 10. 10 is going to be a problem here. Uh, Chronicles of Junagar is, is over here in the corner, as is, by the way. Oh, as are two others. We can take a look at two others. Oh, that is gone. That is gone. We got another X here. But Chronicles of Junagar is going to stick around because Chronicles of Junagar is one that I have concerns about how easy it is to pull out and table. But I do know that I think it's incredible, and I think that the follow-up expansion, Apocalypse or whatnot, gave you a even more compelling story branching pathway kind of situation that I think does pull me in. And so I'm not prepared to get rid of it, at least not until I dive into Apocalypse. I don't know if it stays forever. In a world of all these games, I don't know if it stays forever. But I think it does stay for right now. Same with Assassin's Creed, which, what happened to this box? Oh, no. No, you see this little thing over here? That must have happened. We recently got a new freezer in our basement. I was gone when that happened, and the delivery people dropped it off. And apparently they scratched up my Assassin's Creed box. How dare they? Fortunately, I care about the components less than the box. Also, I'm going to turn around that box. You can bet I'm going to turn around that box. So Assassin's Creed is safe, as is Chronicles of Junagar. What's not safe is the Everrain. The Everrain is getting a, a little X over here. Let's go ahead and give Everrain an X. Let's go ahead and give Assassin's Creed a check mark over here. So Assassin's Creed gets a nice check, okay? The um, Chronicles of got a check already, and the Everrain, which is probably by the, the Everrain is getting an X over here. Okay, so we got three X's on our way towards 10 games that we need to get rid of. <sighs> Decisions. Decisions. So here's what's going to happen next, okay? Adventure Tactics is going to get a, um, Adventure Tactics is going to get a chicken scratch. Uh, halfway, neither to sit, not deciding one way or the other, and Seventh Continent is going to get an X. It hurts me. Is that, am I comfortable with that? 
I almost want to go back on that, but we'll see. We'll see. We'll come back to Seventh Continent then. I may undo that. I've gotten and gotten rid of Seventh Continent before. I have. The problem is, there's so many games. This is a problem. It's not about the games being bad. It's about there being so many games. But Seventh Continent is excellent. But it's also the kind of experience I don't pull out as much. I just don't. And so, it's staying for now. No, no, it's... I have Seventh Citadel coming, which I think did it better. That's my problem and my concern. I think I'm going to get rid of Seventh Continent again. It's my second time getting rid of it. I like it so much that I got it back, but I don't sit down and pull it out and play it, so I should get rid of it. So I think we're going to get rid of it because I need to get this list down. Versus the one that got a um, temporary scratch. Did I do it? Adventure Tactics. Adventure Tactics got a halfway scratch. Let's see if I can save it because Adventure Tactics is one that I was going to get rid of a long time ago, and then Ricky, my daughter, asked me to keep it so that we could play it. That was like a year ago, and we haven't played it. So I think I'm going to try to take the initiative and tell my daughter that I would like to set up a once a week, you know, night to, to sit down and play the game. And let's see if we dive into Adventure Tactics. If we do, I think I'm good. And if we don't, I think I will get rid of it. So we'll see. We'll see what happens. Speaking of which, Alter Quest up there, that box right over there, that's going to get a halfway mark. I need to play the game. I need to play the game. What I might do is... We're doing this whole convention thing. We're doing this convention, uh, level up retreats, level up convention, level up. It's, like, it's level up events, and it's the level up retreat is the one we're doing. July 4th through the 16th. And what I might try to do is I might try to bring, like, 10 games down there and, like, do a video of 10 games I want you to teach me at level up retreat and then uh, force other people to teach me them, and I'll bring the game. Maybe. I don't know. I might. But but Alta Quest for right now gets a chicken scratch. It gets a halfway mark, meaning maybe it goes, maybe it stays. I don't know yet. There's so many good games here. Role player adventures is going to get a scratch. Okay, a, a, an X. Okay, role play adventures over here. In fact, we're gonna go to the other side of the room again. But role play adventures is going to get a X mark because, and this is one with a caveat. Okay, it's one with a caveat here. Here's the caveat. Over on Camp Call, Professor Meg, we've been playing through role play adventures, and we're one mission away from finishing it right now. And then at that point, I'm done with it until the expansion comes. Until the expansion comes later. Now, I will need it for the expansion. Darn it, Chris. Chris, you're back. I will need it for the expansion later. But the, the I don't know, even if I keep it, I might put it in the attic and give it a, 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 an X. Because as long as it's not present and I'm not playing through it, I'm comfortable calling it an X. And it just is what it is. So we're going to call it an X. It might stick around just so I can hold on to it until the expansion shows up. But I'm done with it for right now. So mentally, I'm okay. We'll be going back and forth back to the area, by the way. But for right now, Cthulhu Death May Die over here completely safe. I don't think there's any ever doubt about that. We're going to get a check mark to Cthulhu Death May Die and see how that plays out. So, we're doing great. Great, great, great. Getting rid of so many games right now. Descent Legends in the Dark. That's over there. We'll come back to it. Arena of the Contest. Oh, Arena of the Contest. Arena of the Contest is safe. Let's give that a check right now. That's a solid, safe game. I've been diving through Tenerys Adventures. I'm going to get some coffee, by the way, if you don't mind. Uh, but I've been diving into Tenerys Adventures and coffee. And Tenerys is amazing. I'm enjoying it a lot. It's not going anywhere. I don't have to worry about that. Speaking of which, Massive Dark... I'll show you Massive Darkness later. So let's try to keep things localized in the area that they're in. Machina Arcana. That's another one that is safe. We can mark that safely. Machina Arcana and, and Wild Ascent. Let's give that a nice safe check mark too. Both of those are not really a question. But we have them both, I believe, over here. We have Wild Ascent and then Machina Arcana beneath it or behind it, which I usually try not to do, by the way. Usually behind each game is more of that game. Behind Arena is more Arena. Uh, behind uh, Tainted Grail is more Tainted Grail. Behind Zombicide is more Zombicide, usually. But sometimes not all the boxes work like that. So like, behind Wonderland's War is Quad Heroes, if I recall correctly. Behind Clash of, 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 of Cultures is Monumental. So not always do I get to do it the way I want to do it, but either way, both Wild Ascent and Machina Arcana are safe. Wild Ascent because I love it, and Machina Arcana because I love it. Those should be pretty obvious answers right there. Now Machina Arcana wasn't, I wasn't even sure if I was gonna put it on this list because strictly speaking, that one's not a campaign game. So far from the games we've gone through over here, we have Seventh Continent, Adventure Tactics, Alter Quest, Arena of the Contest, Assassin's Creed. All campaign game experiences. Assassin's Creed is too good, by the way. I haven't played it in a while, but it's too good. I'm not I'm not willing to get rid of it just yet. We have Chronicles of Jonagar, Cloud Spire, Crimson Scales, and Cthulhu that may die. So far from all those, Seventh Continent is the only one that's debatably not a campaign, but it is played in seven to ten hour chunks. Similarly, Machin Arcana is a longer one. Arguably it should not be on this list. So maybe call it I don't even know why I put it on. Maybe I shouldn't have. Maybe I was trying to get to forty for a nice round number. 
I, I don't remember. I put this together like a month or two ago. Has anything new showed up since then? I don't think so. Uh, Roleplay Adventures, the Ever Rain, Wild Sand, those are all campaign games. And let's go ahead and take a look at what's up here, because if we go up here, we have a few things we can talk about. First of all, we have um, Midara over here. Midara is safe because I've heard too many good things about it, and I want to play it first. Once I play it, who knows? Uh, Crimson Scales. Crimson Scales, on the other hand, we talked about it. Unsettled. Unsettled is safe. Not even a question. I love Unsettled. Phenomenal game from Ivy, from, not from Ivy, from Orange, Orange Nebula. And it's also kind of more procedural rather than the campaign. But you still, like, I think of it in a campaign structure in terms of the way I want to go through it and experience it. So it definitely made the list. That one, like, unlike Machin Arcana, which I debate whether I should have, Unsettled definitely belongs on this list. But it is sticking around, not a question. Uh, we have Max vs. Minions. Until I finish this, it's sticking around. Once I finish it, I'm fine getting rid of it. So, But I'm not close enough to finishing it. I have like seven games to go, so that's too many. And then seven games to win, which means like 15, 20 games to play because those missions get harder as you go through it. Mexico's Minions needs to go, but I need to finish it first. And then ISIS Vanguard up here, which is kind of up here, but I really have more of it down there. That one I like too much from when I played it. I have not played the final retail version, but ISIS Vanguard is safe as well. So ISIS Vanguard is safe. Maximus and Minions safe, uh, Unsettled safe. Let's mark those off accordingly. Let's go ahead and get to our little chicken scratch sheet and see what we can do as far as marking things. So, I did, did I put Nemesis on here? Hopefully not. Good, I did not. Okay, Maximus and Minions safe. Okay, hopefully you can see this. Uh, Madara safe. We've got some nice check marks going. And then I said Unsettled safe. Now, again, our goal is to get to 10, and we're at a barely possible 4 so far. This is not as a... Uh, Good looking as I thought it would be. Zombicide, Undead, or Alive. Now, here's a general question for Alex. Um, Alex, why do you put Zombicide, Undead, or Alive, but not Marvel Zombies, and not Zombicide? Huh. No, that makes sense. That checks out. Okay, cool. I, I remember what I was thinking. Zombicide, Undead, or Alive is on this list. But Marvel Zombies is not, neither is Zombicide, Black Plague. Why would I do that? The answer is Zombicide, Undead, or, Alive, Undead or Alive does have a campaign. It's staying, it's staying, it's sticking around for right now. It's an easy check mark over here. That's this game over here. Easy check mark because it's awesome and amazing and I love it and it's sticking around. On the other hand, Tainted Grail, we're giving you a half chicken scratch. Not a decision just yet, but one of our undecideds because Tainted Grail, like I, I didn't have a chance to play as much as I'd like and I do like it. But I have, I played, I played like the intro to this one, and then I also played the intro to Kings of Ruin. And by intro, I mean like a few missions, I don't know. Like I, have like, I have maybe like three hours in Tainted Grail, and then like maybe two hours in Kings of Ruin. And I like them both, but I don't know if I like them enough, at least yet, to compare to the experiences I'm choosing to keep, based on what I want first and foremost. Story is not what I want first and foremost. I like story. When you throw story into Chronicles of Drunagar, when you throw story into Wild Ascent, I enjoy those experiences. The humor and the wit in Unsettled, those things enhance my experience. But I'm usually not keeping things primarily story-based. Usually story kind of mixes into things. Speaking of which, I think, and this hurts to do, we're going to get rid of Destinies. We're going to get rid of Destinies. That is an interesting decision right there. That is down here. Destinies from Lucky Duck Games. This hurts. This hurts. So here's here's a big deal, okay? This is a big deal. This is a big deal. Destinies is a game I gave a 5 out of 5. 5 out of 5s don't leave my collection a lot. In fact, if you've been watching my channel since who knows when, I don't think this might be... This may be the first time since I've been doing this, since I've been doing YouTube, where a 5 out of 5 has left. And that should be a rare experience. I think given, you know, the fact that I've played uh, somewhere in the range of like 600 unique games in the past three years, if not more, maybe 700 unique games in the past three years, I could, I could check it out. My app has the, the logs. But I think that is... You know what? Actually, I could. I want to check it up. I want to pull this up. Let's see what we got. Let's see. Okay. So I go to my app over here, and we go to da -da -da, uh, games played, and we go to the past three years of data, insights. I use BG stats. So we're going to go to insights, BG stats, go by year, and we have 2023. So 2023, we have played 112 new to me games in four months. That's not bad. Am I, I think I'm maintaining. Four months is 120 days. We're not even fully through four months right now. I'm maintaining my game a day right now without even trying to. I'm pretty happy with that. We have 368 in 2022. New to me. We have, in 2021, we have load, load, darn you. We have 319 in 2021. And then 2020, and I remember I started my channel in 2019, in December 2019. In 2020, we have 170. So yeah, that checks out. 270 plus around 600. We have around 900 games that I have played, 900 new to me games that I've played in the past three years since starting this channel. And this is the first time I'm getting rid of a 5, a five out of 5 for me. Now, it's not the first time I'm getting rid of a 5 out of 5 ever, 
It's just in the history of me telling you how I rate games, it is. Like, Cosmic Encounter was a 5 out of 5 for me for a while, and it's a game I got rid of. Uh, Kingdom Builder, and I know this is going to get, like, you know, criticism, but for me, Kingdom Builder was at one point in my top 10 games of all time. Now, I happen to love Kingdom Builder enough that I got it back, but it's no longer, it's not a 5 out of 5 for me where it currently stands. It's a 4 out of 5. Things have changed, my impression. I don't know, maybe I as, as a gamer have changed, but when I first played Kingdom Builder, at one point it was in my top 10 games of all time along with Five Tribes, Kingdom Builder, uh, Kemet, and the Kemet's dropped down to like my number 80, something like that. Things change, times change. Destinies, I believe, is the first time you are seeing me get rid of a 5 out of 5 game, a game that I rated a 5 out of 5. Now, the rating has gone lower since then. I think I updated it to a 4 out of 5 the last time I was doing a, an updated rating, and that's because within the vein of these story-style games, I found other games that give me a similar experience that I currently am more mentally invested in. Games like Skyrim, like role-player adventures, and like role-player adventures I'm about to finish up, but I, I have these other experiences. So Destinies, Destinies is going away, which makes it our 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, Six, we have six chicken scratches. We have Seventh Continent, Darkest Dungeon, Destinies, Jaws of the Lion, Roleplay Adventures, and the Ever Rain. We have six chicken scratches towards our minimum of, of 10 over here that we need. Okay, so we are six out of 10. Six out of 10 so far. I still have a bunch of games to go through. We're making decent time. Where are we on this video? We're 21 minutes into this video. It's not, not decent time. It's okay time. And let's go ahead and talk about. Ooh, let's talk about two over here. Okay, Rise of Moloch. That guy is so good. I don't want to get rid of it. I really don't. And right now it's getting a firm check. But the caveat is Rise of Moloch is basically the equivalent of playing through, um, well, actually, it's right next to it. It's uh, playing through Master of the Universe over here. It's the same idea, same gameplay experience, but Master of the Universe allows you to play as a one shot. Rise of Moloch forces you to play as a campaign. But the charm, the charm of the game is insane. It's incredible. I don't want to get rid of Rise of Moloch. I think it's so, 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 so good. So it stays for right now. As well, another one that's in this corner. We're going to do another check mark in this corner, and that's Burn Cycle. You see, Burn Cycle is another one that, kind of similar to, um, kind of similar to Machina Arcana and Unsettled, it's a little bit more episodic, but also I'm comfortable putting it in here. It's going to stick around because it's going to be on this list because it gives you that much content to go through in a way that you can play through cooperatively. You don't have to take it on as a campaign. It could be single shot, but there's still an absolute ton of content and it is still that mental investment, but it is going to stick around a uh, completely safe, not a question at all. So, I mean, Chip 3 Games is doing pretty well on this list. The main question mark is Hop Marcus, and we'll see how that goes. Now, there's a few other question marks over here. Isis Vanguard, I didn't give it the check yet, but I said already Isis Vanguard is sticking around. It's uh, both up there as well as as well as all the way down here. I have all of my Isis Vanguard down this cubby, waiting to go, waiting to go. Now, many of these games are waiting to go based on Camp Co-op and playing through campaign games, because over on Camp Co-op, we play through campaign games. Some of these I'm playing solo, so Massive Darkness, uh, Tenerous Adventures, I've been diving into the solo, uh, Seventh Continent is kind of thing I play solo, Zombicide Ended or Alive, solo, and solo doesn't mean just solo, I also play a lot. A lot of my other campaign games I play with uh, AP, uh, Keep Opposing, you may have seen him on the channel here and there. He plays a lot of these things with me too, and so I'll go through, what am I gonna call? I'm going to ignore that call. Uh, but yeah, so overall, those things are all good. Now, this is where we start getting into hard choices as well. I mean, the whole list is hard choices. What am I talking about? Uh, we have Zaya. Zaya, Legend of Drift System, up there. Um, I don't know why I put it there. That's not true. I know why I put it there, but it's, it's stretching. But I'm going to give it a safe check. Basically, there's a solo campaign. Um, I like Zyre. It's an easy one to keep. I'm not I'm not questioning this one. Zyre is totally fine. Uh, but then we have another one somewhere. Somewhere, somewhere, somewhere. Where did I put it? Oh, is it down there? Okay, I think it's in the corner. It's like it's really in the corner down there. But down in that corner, we have... Well, we actually have two things. We have two things in the corner. Let's talk about both of them. We have... Over there, we have Stars of Akarios. And over here, we have Skyrim the Adventure Game. So, those are two games that are there. And they're both going to get a check mark because... Well, let's, let's talk about them both. They're getting a check mark for now. Stars of Akarios gets a check mark because I owe them coverage. This was... And I did an unboxing, so uh, generally... O is always a relative term, but when a creator, when a publisher sends me a game, if they ask me first, if a publisher sends me a game just to my doorstep and they don't ask me, I don't consider them as if I owe them anything, I never signed up for it, I still want to and I still will try to make content around those, but I certainly don't consider it a commitment. Versus if I was asked, I consider it far more like I owe you coverage. Now I do consider an unboxing coverage to a degree, I don't do unboxings just to check it off a list, but I consider it as, hey, like you sent me a game, I did give you content, there's a value to you, and now do I want to go into it? And actually, that's another question over here, which is League of Dungeoneers is another one that falls with the camp, where I kind of, I, I got sent the game, I'm interested in it, but having gone through it, um, I'm intimidated and interested, so I don't know. 
But both League of Dungeoneers and Stars of Akarios are both going to get a safe check mark because of that kind of principle. I want to dive into them more. Now, Stars of Akarios I've actually played a few times, but I need to read the rule book because there's a lot more to play. And Stars of Akarios, I I want to play through that. There's just a lot going on as far as the game. Uh, but right now, I still am putting it in the safe camp because I think we're going to safely get to 10. If I can't get to 10... I may consider Stars of Akaras or League of Dungeoneers to be games that I get rid of. I might. I don't know. I'm not sure tactics. I'm gonna give a full check mark right now. I'm gonna. I'm gonna try to play it with Ricky. We're gonna make that little chicken scratch into a check mark, which means we need to get at least four more over here, and we're running out of games. We're running out of games. Hard choice that to be made. But back to the list corner. Skyrim. Skyrim's going to get a nice safe check. I really like Skyrim. I can't wait to play through that one. I've been waiting to play through it on Camp Co-op, but I don't know. At this point, it's one of those things that at a certain point, I have to make decisions around not waiting for Camp Co-op because games have to be played. Although, then again, I'm already going through things on my end anyway. Now, we have over here, we have Massive Darkness. Massive Darkness, I've started playing through a lot. In fact, right about now when I'm filming this, my review hasn't gone up yet, but it will be going up shortly for Massive Darkness. And I like it. I like it a lot. I'll be playing through the entire campaign as well. That's why it's here, by the way, for the campaign aspect, not just the um, episodic aspect. But Massive Darkness is a nice, safe one. Okay, so we got that one there. Uh, we have... Oh, I left, I left the corner. I left the corner. We're going to have to go back to that corner over there. But let's cover what we have over here. We have Too Many Bones. Too Many Bones is on my list as well. Too Many Bones, I don't think it's a question. We got a nice, safe check mark for that one. Uh, we have the Hunter's AD over there in that corner. Zoop, there, Hunter's AD. That's one where, I don't know. They have the new version coming out on GameFound right now, the uh, medieval version of the Hunter's AD. But we're going to give it a half mark, a half mark. Also, also, we have a story to talk about there, okay? So the Hunter's. This is not a pity party. Not a pity party. I want to be. I need to be very clear sometimes. Because sometimes I sometimes I want to talk about things because I like I like having a conversation. I like talking to. You, I like communicating. But sometimes those things, like for instance, let's take an example. Like this past week, I, I was on a flight to England for like three days back and forth, and just came back completely exhausted. I have two days at home before I then go off to Gamma. So I've like my 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 days right now are completely crazy. Like it is it is not cool. And it, I could talk about how tired I am, how exhausted I am, and all those things, but I have to be very mindful to precede those things by telling you that I am incredibly grateful for my life and the life I get to live right now. So I am beyond grateful for the things I get to do, and sometimes those things do have things that aren't the best part of it. It doesn't take away from my gratitude towards that I want this, that I, I, I pursue this. That's kind of a tangent, the side tangent. The, the main point is with the Hunters. The Hunters AD is, is one that I did an unboxing video. Okay, again, not complaining. Uh, the Hunter's ID, I did an unboxing video, and someone shared it to their uh, Facebook group for the for the game, the, ga the, the group for the game. And then people were, like, ripping on the video, like, oh, he doesn't even know the game, doesn't know the game. And again, if you've watched my unboxings, I'm pretty clear about that. That's not the question. But the degree of toxicity around the video, because the fact that I wasn't as focused on the game itself, but was generically, like, you know, I'm talking about the game, I'm talking about, like, you know, why I backed it, this, that, other games in the, that I'm certainly talking about, my typical unboxings and ramblings. But the, the degree of toxicity around, around the video in that community was so intense that it makes me want to have less to do with the game. And to be very clear on multiple counts. One, if you are the creator of the game, this is not your problem, this is not your fault. Two, if you are someone who likes the Hunter's ID and you're not part of that community, this is not your problem, this is not your fault. But it reminds me similarly of how, like, Tom Vassal was doing a video at one point, and he's talking about how, like, Lacerda fans went crazy after Chris and Yi, Chris and, um, Chris, uh, Chrissy and, oh my gosh, uh, Chris and Wendy, Chris and Wendy, uh, when they reviewed the, the, when they reviewed Weather Machine, and they didn't like it. Their, their community of the Talos sort of fans there were fairly toxic. By the way, my battery is on the lowest setting, so if this dies, I'll have to start again. Not start again, continue. But there was a degree of toxicity around their review. And that doesn't mean that that should reflect on all the sort of fans at all. But when a community has a higher degree or percentage of toxicity, like, it doesn't make me want to get rid of the Hunter's AD. Not in the slightest. But it does mean that when I'm going through this list and trying to make cuts... I push the Hunter's AD up a notch. Do I really care or want to be involved with a community that has a segment of toxicity that is larger than the general segment of toxicity? Hopefully that makes sense. Again, not complaining, not whatever, just commentary around the nature of toxicity, gatekeeping, all that kind of thing. 
if you're like elitist about things, you might push people away in different ways. And that's including within the subgenre of board gamers and I'm, I'm elitist about things to a degree. And I might push people away through that. If you say how much you like apples to apples and I'm like, oh, but you should really play code names and this and that, it might push people away. You have to be mindful, myself and others, of your behavior and how it impacts others. We'll come back to it. The Hunter's AD may leave because if I'm just trying to get to 10, I said I'm going to get to 10 over here, and I might pick that one over others. Descent Legends of the Dark. Descent Legends of the Dark is down here in that cubby, and that's one which I'm going to keep for right now because I think I can pull it out and table it pretty quickly. I'm going to dive into it solo, I think, at this point. I think I'm just going to try to, not, not even necessarily to, um, not even necessarily to finish, but to even just start it off, to see if I like it or not. I may just dive into it solo and see what happens. Also, I marked the wrong thing. I gave Dice Stone Adventures a check, but Dice Stone Adventures equally, and that one's down here as well, actually. So, same general area. But Dice Stone Adventures as well is one that I, I'm going to give a check mark to, because that's that we have plans to play that over on Camp Co-op. And then we have we have Horizon Zero Dawn. That's also going to get a check for now. I think I think that one's leaving. To be very clear, I think Horizon Zero Dawn is leaving. We are we are having issues here. I have six games, and I need to get rid of ten. We're definitely not hitting fifteen, but I need to get rid of ten. Hoplo, Hoplo might leave. Dear Lord, Hoplo might leave. Chip Theory, I apologize in advance. That's another thing I have to be mindful of, by the way, because if I get rid of a game like Hoplo, effectively I'm also saying that hey, by the way, Chip Theory, if or when you do more content, I don't even have your base game anymore which is its own thing. And I like Hoplo enough that I definitely want to do coverage for it, because, but do I like it enough that I want to keep it? Those are different conversations. Decisions. Um, we have Monster Hunter World. That is... Oh, I moved that over there. Let me see. We got 1, 2, Kingdom Rush, Monster Hunter World, Marvel Champions. Okay, we're going to have to go through some hard choices here, but we are down to the final three that we haven't talked about, okay? We're down to the final three to talk about, and then from there, we're going to actually get rid of things, or not. So, we got Monster Hunter World, which is all the way up over here. Just, I put it all up on that top thing. That's going to stick around. That one, another fun caveat. Monster Hunter World Iceborne is simply better. I've And, and they could integrate to a degree, but I would rather play through Iceborne. But for right now, I'm still going to play through Monster Hunter World anyway. Let me get some coffee over here. So, we'll see what happens there. You can watch all the uh, Iceborne content that is or will be on the channel to see why... It's better. I don't think it takes away from Monster Hunter World being good, but in a world with limited time and attention, yes, I would rather play Monster Hunter World Iceborne. By the way, if you see Bard Song on the top shelf there, some games are here because, do I not? What is wrong with me? Okay, there's no Isofarian Guard on this list, so we're going to write that in, and that should take away from like the Machina Arcana or whatever's not supposed to be there. Isofarian Guard. Ignore my terrible handwriting. Okay, Isofarian Guard. Also, my computer finally went to sleep, so there's no more Chris George over there, finally. Anyways, Isofarian Guard is safe. That one came in since, you know, putting this together. In fact, what in the world? Oathsworn. Oathsworn is not on this list. Okay, Oath... Jeez, Oathsworn. So we're at 42, so you can use that as whatever metric you want as far as the uh, games. Oathsworn and Isofarian Guard are Hunchman Stank sticking around. I'm actually doing a full comparison video of Oathsworn, Isofarian... Uh, Tenerous Adventures, and Massive Darkness, comparing all four of those. By the way, the battery is about to die, so I'm just going to go ahead and... Uh... So, basically, we're back. Uh, battery problem solved. It was blinking red. That usually means my camera's about to explode. Not actually. Now, another problem we have, by the way, is we also have to add Maximum Apocalypse to this list. I realize I was walking past. Things have changed since I put this list together. And Maximum Apocalypse is interesting because I enjoy that one. But I enjoy that one in the sense that it's going to get a half check mark there. It's going to get a... I like it. But if you're trying to purge things, decisions have to be made. So, here's where we are right now. Oh, and then we have us following. We have Kingdom Rush down here, which is absolutely sticking around. I love that game. And then we also have Marvel Unite, Marvel Champions over here, which definitely should be considered to be a campaign game-esque in terms of what it does. It has a campaign at the very least and has so much content. That is one, by the way, that I have been having bad thoughts about in terms of getting rid of, but we're going to give it a nice check for today, which means we have the following issue. We currently have gone through a bunch of things over here. We've given things half marks, and the half marks, I know I gave them half marks, but every single one of those I thought that I wanted to hold on to and keep. So time to make a decision. We have six games currently going. We have Seventh Continent. We have Destinies. We have ISIS. No, we have Jaws of the Lion. Not Ice Vanguard, just next to each other. We have Jaws of the Lion. We have Roleplay Adventures. We have The Ever Rain. And then we have Darkest Dungeon. Six games currently going. I need to get four more. Our, our check marks right now, let's go ahead and draw our check marks. We have Alter Quest as a half mark over here. We have Hoplo Victorum as a half mark. We have 
I didn't do a lot of half marks apparently. We have Tainted Grail as a half mark. We have the Hunter's AD as a half mark. And we have Maximum Apocalypse as a half mark. I'm going to go ahead and give the Hunter's AD a full full X. Listen, I need to get to 10. I want to play the Hunter's AD. I am more interested in the medieval version of it. I am more interested in the medieval version. The problem and the tricky part is, do I want to go ahead and get my hands on the medieval version of the game? Do I, do I want to get my, without without playing the new version? So I'm giving it I'm giving it a full on getting rid of over here. If I can play it before it goes, we can talk. But I, I need to get rid of something, so it's going for right now. And a bunch of these I gave check marks that are check marks that I just want to try it out. So for instance, I'm gonna go ahead and save Alter Quest. I want to try it. I want to try the system. Will I get rid of it? Very possibly. But I want to try it first. I need to push myself into it. I've been doing a good job recently. I dove into Tenaris. I dove into Massive Darkness. I really gave those a full full experience and full look into it. Uh, Tainted Grail. It's hard. It's hard. I'm going to get rid of Maximum Apocalypse first. Max Pox is going to get an X, so we got that one gone, so we got up to 8 so far. I need to get rid of two, two more. Hoplo Victorum, genuinely the only reason it's saved right now is because of the aspect in which I kind of want to play through the campaign content. The expansion content. I'm going to donate Hoplo Victorum to the Level Up Retreat Library. That's going to that's going to solve that problem. So Hoplo is going, but it's going with a caveat. It's going to the level up retreat library. That way I can maybe I'll do the same with the hunters. No, it's not the hunters. See, that's the difference. Hoplo, I think you can play at a at a, a convention and retreat and actually genuinely have a good time. I think it it's reasonable to put it into the library versus the hunters isn't. So I'm putting a Hoplo Marcus Victorum into the level up retreat library. That way I can always pull it back if or when they have expansion content and I want to dive into it then. Uh, alternatively as well, you know, I know Devin and Meg both have it as well, so there's plenty of options. Because right now I'm keeping it only for that potential. This way I am instead getting rid of it, but getting rid of it in a way that I could pull it back. And the level up retreat library, not my basement. It's going somewhere else entirely. It's leaving. Which means we still need to get one more. Alter quest I took off the list. Hoplo I got rid of. Max Hoplo I got rid of. Haunt Hunters. So unless I'm willing to change my mind or something, Tainted Grail has to go. So let's do one last quick recap of the list and see what we can do over here. Okay. We have a Seventh Continent. We have Adventure Tactics. Adventure Tactics is staying to play with Ricky, but that's still until I, until I don't play it. It's still staying. We have Arena of the Contest, Nine No Question, Assassin's Creed, Burn Cycle, Chronicles of Cloud Cloudsmire, Crimson Scales, Cthulhu Death May Die, and granted, Crimson Scales and Frosthaven and Gloomhaven and Jaws of the Lion having four separate entries, but hey, it still is. I totally have to get to 10 either way. We have Destinies I got rid of, Descent I'm keeping just to play it, Dicewind Adventures, Frosthaven, Gloomhaven, Hoplo, Horizon Zero Dawn, which again, I, I, so I don't even know how much I talked about Horizon Zero Dawn. I think I made a check mark, but I don't know if I talked about it. I don't think that one stays. I don't. But I want to play it more. I enjoyed it enough that I want to fully dive into it. And again, same idea. They get, sent me a whole bunch of stuff. I did an unboxing. I've talked about how I enjoyed it, and I do enjoy it, but I, I don't. I'm not willing to get rid of it yet. Will I play through the entire stack of boxes I have? No, I will not. Absolutely not. That's that's not. As much as I like the game, I don't like it enough that I'm in any ways thinking of playing through the entire stack of boxes. But it's not currently a contender for game being gotten rid of. We have uh, Ice Vanguard, which is staying. Jaws of the Lion, Kingdom Rush. We have Machina Arcana, Marvel Champions. I could, I could say Marvel Champions is leaving now. There's a part of me that wants to. More and more, I'm realizing I don't play Marvel Champions enough to justify its existence. And the problem is, unlike other games that kind of don't have as much content constantly coming out, Marvel Champions is always throwing more content at me. So the space it takes up is constantly growing, even as I don't play it more. I just play it like a few times a year. Uh, we have Master Darkness, we have Mechs vs. Minions, which will go, but not yet. We have Madara, we have Monster Hunter World, which probably will go at some point, but not yet. We have Rise of Moloch, will play Adventures again. Rise of Moloch arguably should go, but it's not not a chance. I like it too much. We have Skyrim, Stars of Arcarios. Stars of Arcarios, like... Like, a part of me, like, do I get rid of Tainted Grail before Stars of Arcarios? That makes no sense, right? The Everain, the League of Dungeoneers, the Hunters, Too Many Bones, Unsettled, Wild Ascent, Zaya, Zomicide Under the Light, Ice of Vanguard, Oathsworn, and Maximum Apocalypse. I need a tenth. And I could use Tainted Grail and justify it with, hey, Kings of Rune is coming, but, like, if I get rid of Tainted Grail when I'm only two hours into the adventure, does that really count as... I don't want to do it. And, of course, this is the part where I'm like, hey, it's an arbitrary list I put together. 
Something's gotta go. Give me one more second to go through this. Burn Cycle, Chronicles, Cloud Spire, Crimson Scales, Clue Left May Die, Darkest Dungeon, Descent, Destinies, Dice Stone Adventures, Frost Haven, Gloomhaven, Hoplo. Do I get rid of... Here's an interesting question for you. Will I play through Crimson Scales with anyone outside of Meg? Because I have Gloomhaven and Crimson Scales and Frosthaven. My copy of Frosthaven is currently being used to play through the whole entire Frosthaven with, together with Professor Meg. But will I play through Crimson Scales solo? I don't think I would. I don't think I would take the setup. I've played through enough Gloomhaven. Do I get rid of Crimson Scales? Because if I'm going to play through it anyway, it's going to be through it with Meg. We just went from 9 to 11. So here's what we're going to do over here, okay? We are going to... Or would you go back down to 10? We're going to save the Hunters. Hunters is being saved instead. We're going to get rid... We're going to save Tainted Grail. We're going to save that one. We're going to get rid of Crimson Scales. And we're going to get rid of Gloomhaven. Because Gloomhaven is only being kept for Tainted for Crimson Scales. And then, if I ever play through it, I'm just going to say... And, I, and practically speaking, I think it's not unreasonable. I think the, the person who I'd probably play through it with, it would be playing through with Meg. So, recapped, final 10 that are going. This list was much harder than I thought it would be. I'm sorry for the 45 minute long video. This was literally a process of me deciding. That was, this is not a pre-decided thing. I knew one or two of these. I believe walking through this, I knew Darkest Dungeon was going. That might have been the only one. Hey, let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. Okay, we have Seventh Continent is going. We have Crimson Scales is going. We have Darkest Dungeon. We have Destinies. We have Gloomhaven. Hoplover Torum. Sort of. That one's going to the Dice Tower Retreat Library. Not Dice Tower Retreat. The uh, Level Up Retreat Library. We have Jaws of the Lion, uh, which I guess I knew that was going to. So Jaws of the Lion and Darkest Dungeon, I knew those were going. We have Roleplay Adventures. We have the Ever Rain, And we have Maximum Apocalypse. Those are the ten games we are getting rid of as a result of this video. So, I hope you enjoyed this journey with me. I'll have timestamps down below on everything. I still have too many games. I still have way too many campaign experiences. That still leaves 30 plus campaign things to go through, and I still have more coming from games I backed and all that. Although I've been better at slowing down how many I actually do back and dive into. There's a lot of great games out there, and there's never enough time for the games we want to play. I don't solve that problem by not getting games. I solve that problem by constantly evaluating what my highest priorities are. I like Crimson Scales. I like Gloomhaven. I'm just shelving that off onto someone else's problem as far as, hey, I'll play with Meg's copy or I won't play it at all for right now. I can always get things back too if I ever actually dive into all these games. And things like, uh, you know, The Hunters, I I do want to try that. There's a lot of these games here that I will probably play and then hopefully get rid of. Alter Quest, The Hunters, I'm hoping I, I get rid of them. Even Tainted Grail, I'm not, like, my problem with Tainted Grail isn't whether I keep it or not. I, I, I think it's a good game. My problem is, like, I want to give it, like, 10 hours of, of gameplay before I make that decision, not two and a half hours. I want to see more of the world and then either be like, well, no, it's enraptured me enough that I want to stick around, or it didn't and I'm fine getting rid of it. I just want more time to make that decision. But that's what we have here. 42-ish campaign games, a bunch of things that I'm obviously keeping because I'm in love with them, a bunch of things that I want to keep enough because I really, really like them, uh, 10 that are leaving, a lot with uh, severe uh, thoughts and concerns behind it. And until next time, I'm Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co. I hope you enjoyed this video, and as always, I hope you have a good one.